That is just ridiculous. Do you guys do this? Basically, I go through every now and again, I just get enjoyment out of it, and I, I look for the weird stuff that's gone on to sell on eBay over the years. I've got a couple here that have just blown my mind. Justin Timberlake's half-eaten French toast has gone on to sell for $1,025 back in the year 2000 after he left a radio interview, and he left these pieces, he left his breakfast behind, basically, and a 19-year-old fan has bid on it and paid $1,000 to get this French toast. Britney Spears bubblegum back in the year 2000 as well. Uh, somebody's picked it up at a concert in Wembley and put it on eBay and it sold for $14,000. Unbelievable. Here I am, I'm selling shoes and clothes and, and these people are making thousands of dollars off celebrity food. I'm definitely in the wrong niche category. I've got to change things. That is just ridiculous. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing really well out there. Massive episode today. The first time in five months of full-time reselling that I've had a $2,000 sales week. So I'm feeling pretty good about things. I'll be taking you through 10 of my very best sold sales items from this week. I also wanna feature another reseller out in the community doing some really great things. And then I wanna take you through those sales numbers, show you how the $2,000 sales week came about. If you are here for the very first time, I'm a full-time online reseller. I also do three videos right here on YouTube talking about it. So it'd be great to have you subscribe feel free to give this video a like as well it's a fantastic way to support the channel and i can't thank you enough for doing so the first item that i've got for you this week is a hall table that i picked up at a garage sale for just 40 dollars. so let's get into it it's a big episode today so this one really caught my eye. It was purchased at a garage sale for $40 just last week, and I really like the glass top to it. I really like the rattan base. It was a solid wood, no damage situation. Two big indicators that I look for when I'm buying furniture, even the leg work as well, the carving on the legs. It was just a quality piece of furniture, I thought, in my opinion. Now, I've gone on to sell this one for $140, so I have made $100 profit in the space of just six days. Um, I probably could have held out and got $180 to $200, but Facebook Marketplace furniture sales have been a little bit slow for me recently. So when I got the offer at 140, I really couldn't say no to this to get $100 in my pocket as profit. Um, I was absolutely thrilled. So do keep an eye out for items like this. If you do see uh, the hall tables, they, they do go on to sell in a pretty quick space of time for some good money. And fortunately, there were a few more furniture sales throughout the week as well. So this one has kickstarted a pretty good week and I was really happy to get the $100 profit. Another piece of furniture for this next item, it was the Medang Entertainment Unit. Now, this range of furniture sells incredibly fast for me. If you guys have watched these episodes over the last few weeks and months, you would have seen this exact item a few times now. I've been able to sell about eight or nine of them. Um, this by far was the lowest price that I've been able to get, and that really just tells me that the market right now for furniture is just at a very much a low point. And you've really got to adjust your pricing to what the market is, is willing to pay. I had this one up initially for $175. It it did take 16 days to sell and I was getting no nibbles at $175. I brought it down to $150, again, nothing. I've actually had to drop this one down to get the sale for $130 and I think my lowest price for this one previously was about $160. I have sold them for 220. So that just gives you context around how it's actually been over the last few weeks. And probably the biggest takeaway I've had from this is you've really got to play to what the market is willing to pay for it. So I just had to keep dropping the price until there was a buyer. And that one for this piece was $130. So look, I've still profited 80 bucks and it's not the end of the world. It's still a really great result. But the fact it took 16 days to sell, we are definitely in a slow point, but I'm still really, really happy to get the deal done. I wanted to make mention of this next item because I did do a video on it a few weeks ago. It was the bedside tables that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace for just $40. Now, these ones have actually gone on to sell for $100. I was trying to get $140 for it to make $100 profit. I did spend three hours on it, sanding down the tops, giving it a really good clean, giving it a really good polish. Um, and I, I really did think that I could get the full $100 profit for it. Just not the case. And really, it just I guess it really just highlights the point that when you're buying your furniture, don't buy anything you've got to put time, work, effort, and energy into. Just buy quality pieces of furniture that are in completely good condition that you can just go on to resell immediately. Um, you'll get your high profit. You won't need to put the time and the effort into it, and it's just going to work out to be a faster sales result for you. So I've learned a lesson here. Yes, it's great to make the $60 on something that really was only worth what I paid for it at the time, but I don't think I'll be doing this again. It was just too much effort for little return, but still $100 in my pocket for three hours worth of work. 
This next item was picked up in a trip to the thrift video just last Thursday. It was the Crazy Skates Rollerblades. Now, these are an adult size, black and red, uh, size 10, um, US 11 women's. Um, nice to finally find an adult pair of rollerblades because I've only ever found the kids range. Um, I've sold the kids pairs for about 60 bucks. So I, I knew that I could go slightly higher for the adult pair. Um, these have actually sold on Facebook Marketplace for $75. So we've made some good money here, $63 on a pair of rollerblades that were pretty much in like new condition. Uh, and they have sold on Marketplace, so there were no fees associated. Six day sales cycle on these ones. A really great item to look out for. I do sell these in a pretty quick space of time, generally within the space of a week or two. And you can find these around the five to $10 price point in a lot of op shops. So if you do stumble across them, definitely grab them, list them up for 60 to $80, depending obviously on the condition and uh, you'll make some pretty good money from it. Next one up was purchased at a garage sale again just last week and uh, this one was the Les Paul Gibson guitars. Now I had two of these and I also had a uh, Nintendo Wii game as well. I think World of Rock or something like that. Um, so this one was good. I, I knew that at the $40 purchase price, it was sort of quite high end for a garage sale item, but I just knew the resale value on eBay was probably for the two of them well over $100. So I knew that there was some wiggle room even at the $40 asking price that they were asking. Um, it was bought in a bundle actually, so I did get a few more things for the $40 that I paid. So maybe this was more worth about 30 to 35 but it has gone on to sell for $110, uh, including postage. So when you take out the postage of $15, when you take out the fees of about $14, I've left basically with a situation of doubling my money. I've put 40 in and I've received a $40 profit back. So sold within the space of seven days, a very fast sales item, the Nintendo Wii Guitar Hero Guitars. Uh, they are a great item to find. And I think generally you're gonna find them at a lower price point than what I've paid, uh, which is even better for you. Um, they do go on to sell for pretty much 50 to $60 per guitar. Um, you're gonna make some good money if you do find them. Now, I love my shoes, guys. I do always sell a few pairs every single week. It was no different this week. I found the Asics Gel Netburner Professional 13s. Um, these were some netball shoes. They were a pretty good size. I think they were a size 10 from memory. Um, I've paid just $6 for these in the op shop, but they were in just such really good condition that I've had to go on and sell them for $56.97. Got to buy within the space of just 14 days. When you take out all the fees associated, I've made a $36 37 cent profit and like you always uh, see on these videos I do like to try and make $30 profit when I sell a pair of shoes So to find these netball shoes coming into the netball season obviously a very good time to be selling these sort of things uh, To make a $36 profit. I'm very very happy with the result So do keep an eye out for any sort of sporting shoe I talk about my footy boots a lot But uh, even the netball shoes have still gone on to sell in a pretty quick space of time uh, Do look for really good condition and look for brands like ASICS because they obviously sell pretty fast Again, another trip to the thrift episode. Uh, just last week, I picked up a few horror DVDs. Now, look, I'm really starting to pay a lot more time and attention into the DVDs and the books. And when it comes to DVDs, I play in two sort of categories and they're polar opposites. It's either horror, uh, gore, horror, just you know, crazy sort of stuff like that, or kids, um, you know, Disney, that sort of stuff. And I try to do bundles, or I try and find individual horror DVDs that comp for over thirty dollars. And you'd be surprised at how many horror DVDs actually comp for over that thirty dollar price point. This was one of them. It was uh, Return of the Living Dead, and um, I was able to get this one done for twenty nine ninety seven. The postage was only four dollars fifty, and the fees were three dollars ninety. So off this single DVD, I've been able to profit. $20.57. Now, if you asked me about DVDs a few months ago, I would have said there's no money in it. I've really just not paid the time and attention to look into this category and see that there is a lot of value to be made in this space. So I'm really going to make it one of the categories that I put a lot of time and attention into when I'm out there sourcing now. Um, easy, easy item to list, no doubt about it. And for some of them, there is some really good money to be made and it's also a low entry cost at around just a dollar each and every time. So if you're new to reselling, I do recommend to get into the DVDs. Always check the discs as well though. Make sure that the discs are in good condition before you before you purchase. But um, to turn this one into a $20 profit in the space of just six days, uh, look out for your horror DVDs. I mean, don't watch them, but sell them. Um, you'll make a few. I was absolutely thrilled to see this one come through on eBay just a few days ago. It was the kids e-learning books. Now, I've picked up volumes 1 to 24 for $20 at an op shop. And it was a complete series, which when you're buying books, you just want to be buying complete series. You just get more money for it. Now, the comps on eBay were telling me that this series of e-learning book on general knowledge was worth $250 on eBay. So I was absolutely stoked to get my hands on it for just 20 bucks. And in the end, I've taken 
get an offer from somebody locally for $205. So no doubt this would be my biggest uh, book flip on eBay. Uh, to turn 20 into 205, I've delivered this one literally just 10 minutes around the corner. So I haven't had to pay the large postage charges because these books are quite heavy. Um, and the bloke has absolutely loved it. He's bought it for his daughter, um, knows what they're actually worth, knows the true value of the item, uh, which is exactly the person that I was looking for. Uh, when you take out the fees of $26.65, I've been left with a profit here of $158.35. It did take 44 days to sell. Uh, I have bought another 30 volumes of this series. So I'm anticipating that there's probably gonna be about another $300 worth of resale value to be made on this book series. So we're talking about 500 bucks in, in the end when the sales get done. But the first one out of the way, um, the big one, volumes one to 24 e-learning books. Do look out for them. My biggest book sale to date. This one was a nice, easy flip on Facebook Marketplace. I picked these up. Uh, it was the PlayStation 1 console. There were eight games, two controllers, all the cables. Discs worked really well. Um, no scratches on it whatsoever. Even came with a manual. Uh, picked this up for a really good price of just the 50 and it sold in the space of 20 days for $125. I did miss the Christmas period for this one. It was bought on the 28th of December and, and it has just recently sold. So just missed that rush of, of Christmas where I might've got a few more dollars for it. Um, but this one did make me a $75 profit, no fees associated on Facebook Marketplace. So pretty good flip. The only thing I'd say with this one that I could have probably got a few more dollars out of it from is just pulling out one or two of the games uh, that were comping for over $30 listing them up on eBay separately and then selling the console with maybe five or six games and, and try and still make the $125 sale price. But not to be on this one, I just, to be honest, couldn't be bothered, just wanted to sell it again and make some money and uh, I've been able to go ahead and make a $75 profit. So job done. Did pretty well at this garage sale last week, to be fair, because there have been quite a number of items that have gone on to resell already. Um, these have sold really fast within the space of just two days. It was the specialized mountain bike men's cycling shoes. Now, first pair that I've sold really in the men's cycling range, but what I do know about cycling gear, Specialized is the brand that you wanna be looking out for. It's almost like the number one cycling brand out there. I'm not a cycler myself, but I just know that this brand goes on to sell very well. And uh, certainly the case for this pair, I've gone ahead, I've listed them for $59.97, and that's exactly what I got for it. So when you pull out the postage, $7.20, the fees of $7.80, I've made a profit here of $40 on a pair of cycling shoes, but I bought them at a garage sale for just $5. The bloke that was selling them, he full well knew what the retail price of these shoes were. He goes, look, I know, I know what I'm selling you. Um, but I'm happy to give them away for five bucks. And I, I think going at the end of a garage sale run, you know, 10, 11 o'clock in the afternoon, in the morning, um, you can sometimes get those results where people are just trying to make a few more dollars to round out their day at the garage sale. And uh, I said, how much for the shoes? And he came to me with $5. So I wasn't disappointed because I knew I was probably gonna get that 60. And, uh, and that's what I have. Two day sales cycle on these, sold on eBay, $40 profit. Thank you very much. So they were my 10 best sold sales items of the week, guys. Hopefully you got a bit of a kick out of those. Let me know in the comments below, what was your best sold sales item this week? I always do a featured resale of the week and uh, do let me know in the comments. I'll pick one out each week and feature you as a featured reseller. I do wanna jump into that right now. And the person that we've got today is Anthony Neves. He is a local man just around the corner from me, actually a suburb or two away. And he's come up with a purchase that I just think is very cool because if I could find this in an op shop, I would absolutely buy it because I know that it would go on to sell for quite a few dollars. He's picked up a Winfield Cup St. George Illawarra Dragons vintage t-shirt 1993. Um, this is just a very, very cool item. Now he's paid a dollar for it. I don't know how you can find this for a dollar, but he has. Uh, and he's gone on to sell it. After about six weeks on eBay, he's left it up to try and get top end figures and he sold it for $100. So vintage t-shirt, NRL, St. George Illawarra Dragons, a very cool find for just a dollar in the op shop. And uh, to make a hundred bucks out of that, yeah, that's the stuff you sort of live for when you're out thrifting. You hope to find those sort of items. Um, so I thought I'd highlight that one today, Anthony. Very, very good sale, mate. And he actually just sent me through another item as well, a pair of loafers that he sold for $300 as well. So I almost flicked it out and put the uh, the loafers into this episode, but um, we'll stick with the St. George Illawarra Dragons. A, a great result, mate, 93, vintage tea, sold for a hundred bucks. It's amazing what you can find in the thrift. 
All right, time to jump into my sales numbers for this week. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting these across to you because I really want to detail how I actually went about my $2,000 sales week. If we pull the grid up for you to have a look at, there were 49 sold items this week. That's a record for me. Um, I've only probably hit the 40s maybe once or twice over the last five months of being a full-time reseller. Uh, my cost of goods sold was $503.20. Uh, total sales, $2,023.41. My previous best was about $19.50. Um, so I've topped that by about $75. Um, so I'm just really stoked to break the $2,000 mark. Um, and I profited $1,524 with a 75% profit margin. So just awesome, really, really happy. The hard work has paid off this week. Uh, it was a slow sort of start to January, but I've really just made sure that I maintained my listing habits and kept putting up 15 new listings every single day. That has snowballed or accumulated into 49 sales, $2,000. I really do realize and I'm quickly realizing that eBay is just a numbers game. The more time that you put in, the more listings that you make, you do receive the results in your sales figures. So it's all about how hard you work is how much you get out of it. You probably hear it quite a bit, but I believe it is to be true. Um, to get 49 sales in the space of a week where I normally average 30, the only thing that I changed, my sourcing was the same in the sense of the items that I was buying. I kept buying the same sort of items, but I just bought more of it and I listed more of it. Uh, a lot more time, a lot more work, a lot more energy put into it, but the results are there for itself. $1,500 in profit in the space of just one week. Um, this is completely possible for literally anyone out there. It, it's a slow process to build your inventory up. I've got an eBay store with about 600 items um, listed and really there's no death pile for me. I, I, I collect the items, I list the items, I store the items away. Um, so I'm forever having to go out and source more items, but um, the time, the effort, the energy put into it, if you can get to a place where you do have a store of say 500 plus items and then you are consecutively listing you know, around that 15 a day, these figures I think hopefully are a consistent number for me now that I'm at that level. Um, you know, In the first four months of doing this reselling, I was only doing eight to 10 listings every day and uh, I was probably only sourcing about 250 items a week. That's now gone up to 400 items a week and obviously the, the listings um, pick up as well. Um, and, and no doubt the, the sales will follow. So it's a very simple game. You, you've just got to put in the, the hard work, I guess, to get there. Um, but I was just absolutely thrilled with a $2,000 uh, sales week. Um, I am also focusing as well on four niche categories. I really want to put, for at least for the next few months, all my focus into shoes, clothing, uh, books, and DVDs. I really want to make sure when I'm thrifting, I'm just focusing on those four categories. Um, yes, if there's an item in, in a different area, like a plush toy that I know is worth $100, I will still pick those items up. But I really want to make my business, my eBay store, shoes, clothing, books, and DVDs. And I think having that focus will just ground me to really understand those areas of the business really well. And then later on down the track, I can maybe focus on four new categories, you know, full time. But um, yeah, I'm just really, really happy with that. Um, hopefully these videos and, and hopefully these numbers and these sales and everything that I'm doing here, it's not for me to kind of say, how good am I going uh, and really kind of just, you know, put that out there. It's more to inspire and motivate you guys out there to go, look, this guy is literally just buying items out of an op shop and he's making $1,500 a week. Um, it's completely possible for anyone. And uh, if you just put in the hard work, time, the effort, the energy, you will get these results. So um, hopefully it motivates you to get out thrifting, find some really cool items, list them up on eBay and make a few dollars. Um, it's been an awesome week for me. Hopefully it continues. Hopefully I can keep bringing you these $2,000 sales figures um, because my goal for the end of this year is to hit $100,000 in sales. And this week being a $2,000 week, I just need to do that every week for the rest of the year and I'll hit that 100,000. So a lot more work left to go, a long, long way left on this journey, but um, I'm really just happy to hit that milestone today. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed the episode, got a bit out of it. That's what I always try and do, try to bring, bring you guys some value uh, each and every week. Uh, I will leave it there. We are done and dusted for this Sunday. The Conor McGregor fight is on in a couple of hours. So I do want to get this video up and then go and watch that. Um, so I'll see you in the next episode, guys. We'll do a Tuesday video and uh, I'll look forward to catching you then.